This video is intended to complement the operator's manual and should be used as part of an employee training program. Training must be conducted without exposing the trainee to a fall hazard and should be repeated on a regular basis. Before using this equipment, all users must first read and follow the manufacturer's instructions for each part of the system. These instructions must be provided to all users of this equipment. Alterations or misuse of this equipment or failure to follow instructions may result in serious injury or death. This equipment is designed to be used with approved DBI solid components. Substitutions or replacements made with non-approved components may jeopardize the compatibility of the equipment and may affect the safety and reliability of the complete system. Connectors must be capable of supporting at least 5,000 pounds. Connectors must be compatible in size, shape and strength. Non-compatible connectors may unintentionally disengage or roll out. Rollout occurs when interference between the connectors and anchorage connector causes the hook gate to accidentally open. Self-locking snap hooks and carabiners must be used with this system to reduce the possibility of rollout. Do not use connectors that will not completely close over the attachment. The anchor used to suspend the emergency descent device must sustain static loads of at least 3,100 pounds. The following illustrations show the correct means of attaching the device to an anchor point. See Section 2 of the Operator's Manual for information about compatibility and anchor strength requirements. Applications with a sloped descent require a guide cable. The anchor used to support the guide cable must be strong enough to withstand the forces in the guide cable during a descent. The installation of the guide cable must be designed by a qualified person. The angle of the guide cable and the amount of sag will greatly affect your descent speed. So the guide cable must be installed at a slope with limited to minimal sag to ensure the user reaches the landing area quickly. Table 1 of the Operator's Manual provides the approximate recommended anchorage strengths for various system configurations. When the angle of the vertical guide cable is 10 degrees or less, the anchor strength should be no less than 5,000 pounds. It is not necessary to function test the unit before you use it, but carefully inspect it according to Section 5 of the Operator's Manual. Plan your emergency escape system and how it will be used before starting your work. Consider all factors that will affect your safety before, during and after an escape. Select a rigid anchorage point that is capable of supporting at least 3,100 pounds. The landing area must be clear of obstructions to allow a safe descent. Failure to provide an unobstructed descent path and landing area may result in serious injury. DBI Sala recommends performing a test descent using a minimum weight of 120 pounds. The descent speed should be uniform and allow the user to reach the landing area safely. If you use a test weight, be sure it has been approved by the safety officer on your worksite. After using the emergency escape system, the line will have to be manually retracted by turning the wheel on the side of the unit. The escape system is ready once the sleeve is back up to the descent location. Only a full body harness with a front or back D-ring can be used with this device. Ensure the D-ring will hold you upright. See the manufacturer's instructions of your full body harness for more information. Warning! Do not use a body belt with this equipment. Body belts do not support your entire body and may result in serious injury. 
The emergency descent device and the installation must be inspected or tested by a competent person according to sections 5.2 and 5.3 of the operator's manual. It's important to note that the roll gliss is not like a self-retracting lifeline and does not need to be taken out of service after it's been used in an emergency situation. But it must be sent to an authorized service center every two years for inspection and service. A formal inspection should be completed by a competent person other than the user every single month. A formal inspection should also be completed if the system parameters change, such as after a system or its anchorage has been moved. Record the inspection results in the Inspection and Maintenance Log in Section 9 of your Operator's Manual. If the inspection reveals an unsafe or defective condition, remove the unit from service and contact DBI-SALA for information about repair and replacement options.